Hello, this is Kimitsu. In this video I'm going to explain how does the Go board from my previous videos work. First, let me explain operators. I use three kinds of them, with one, two and three command blocks per intersection. Intersection is the name for each playable point of a Go board. Single command operators are over here. This one clears the board. Each of its command blocks has the same set block to Minecraft Air command, and the coordinates point to a corresponding block above the board. This one clears the FFLU, flat fill logic unit. This one clears the backup board. Two command operators are down there. For each of the 361 intersections of the board, there are two command blocks and a comparator between them. The first command block tests for a certain block on the board or on the FFLU. For instance, this operator looks for a carpet. If such block is found, the comparator powers up and the second command is performed. The command here is to place a piece of redstone dust in the corresponding position of the FFLU. Thus, this whole operator scans the shape of the white stones on the board and places redstone dust in that shape onto the FFLU. Now, this redstone torch suppresses the output from the comparator. This allows to fire the second command each time operator is launched, even if the output from the first command block doesn't change. Three command operator has an additional command block after a repeater for each intersection. This operator here looks for redstone dust on the FFLU and places air blocks at the corresponding intersections of the board. Also, it adds one point to Black's score for each such block. So what happens when a move is played? First, the main clock detects a player with a non-zero objective, go move, which is the use count for carpets. The main clock is put on hold. Several flags are reset and several board operators are launched. Each of these operators seeks for a specific item on the board and, if found, sets the flag. Flags are then used in a circuit that ensures that no more than one action is performed at the time. When the action is decided, for example, Black has played a move, the following sequence starts. First, the board is saved to backup. Three operators are used, one that clears the backup and two that copy black and white stones. The move marker is not saved because it has different data value than normal stones. Next, FFLU is cleared and white stones from the board are copied onto the FFLU as redstone dust. At the same time, the air blocks from the board are copied onto the FFLU as redstone blocks. Now, if you recall the rules, the group of stones is captured when none of them has an empty adjacent intersection. The way FFLU works, the entire group of redstone dust that has at least one adjacent redstone block will be turned into redstone blocks. The captured stones will be found where redstone dust remains unpowered. Next, three command operator looks for unpowered redstone dust on the FFLU, places air blocks in corresponding positions of the board and adds one point to black score for each of such blocks. And that is how capturing works. Next, the score is updated. I'll talk about this later. Next comes an illegal move detection. It works the same way as capturing. Black stones and black move marker are copied to the FFLU as redstone dust, while air is copied as redstone blocks. Then the game looks for unpowered redstone, but instead of clearing the captured stones, it just sets the flag that the move is illegal. Next, based on that flag, the sequence either runs the operator that converts move markers into normal stones, 
or the one that turns them into air. Then the pass flags are reset and the hold from the main clock is released. The sequence for the move of opposite color is the same, it just uses different operators. When two passes happen, the selector for the move sequence switches and instead of a move, the area claiming sequence happens. This sequence doesn't save backups because we want to be able to undo scoring entirely up to the state of the last move. First, the FFLU gets cleared, and then three operators are launched. One that copies air from the board to redstone dust in FFLU. Second, that does the same for white stones. And third, that copies the move marker as redstone block. Thus, the whole area of air and white stones will be filled starting from the move marker. At the same time, another operator is launched, which adds one point to black for each of the white stones that are found on the board. Next, redstone blocks from the FFLU are copied as area markers to the board and one point is given for each block. Surrounded white stones are overwritten, so to account for them, next operator removes one point from the score for each white stone that is left on the board. Finally, the score updater launches and hold is removed from the main clock. The score updater is a device that allows to save backup of the score. To count the score, board operators use objectives go true score B and go true score W, which are attached to players closest to the board. When score updater is launched, it depletes true score while adding the same amounts to score and backup score. The score is the one that is displayed on screen, so it uses fake players black and white, while the backup score is attached to players so you can run commands with selectors based on it. When undo is called, the board is restored from the backup using operators, and the score is restored by depleting backup score while subtracting the same amounts from the displayed score. To speed up the process, large amounts of points are added and subtracted in larger steps. These are the core parts of the map. Other features such as item supply, time setter, reset sequence, etc. are trivial. There is room for optimizations and improvements. For instance, I could use two FFLUs to detect invalid moves and capture stones at the same time. It would require to build a few more operators though. It is also possible to account for Japanese rule of Ko, but that would either be slow or rather tricky. I guess that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the explanation. Thank you for watching. See you next time.